Herself in Darfur, uh, Care International is only working in South Darfur and East Darfur. And we are currently serving around 600,000 people with assistance in that area. Uh, we have received restocking in East Darfur. Uh, that came in two days ago, and that's currently being uh, taken out to the clinics that we work in. And South Darfur is a big challenge for us at this point in time due to the uptick in conflict in that area. Uh, the rural communities that we have committed that we've got uh, clinics in are still ongoing, and that work is that work is going well. But it is a challenge to be restocking in South Darfur at this time. We need peaceful routes to be delivering aid and assistance through. You would be making RSF officials aware of the work you're doing, mm -hmm. as in any uh, group which is in a contested or a combat area. You're not necessarily asking for permission, and certainly you are not facilitating access by any payments, but you are making them aware of what you intend to do. Our concern is that what we're going to see is a much more visible uh, number of displaced people who are needing immediate assistance, whether that's in ensuring they've got enough food to eat, ensuring they've got enough water to drink, ensuring they've got adequate sanitation. At the moment, that's a relatively invisible population because they are staying with host families. But the ability for host families to support those populations is extremely tested at this point in time. So I would imagine over the coming month or two months, we are going to see a lot more of those populations being visible and in need of immediate assistance. Things are unlikely to get easier over the coming two or three months. And I think all of us have to evolve as agencies and as the overall response, we have to be getting some guarantees of security for populations from the warring factions to say that the uh, civilian casualties will, will be reducing and that people will be respecting keeping civilians safe. We have to be establishing safe humanitarian corridors that agencies can be, can be delivering assistance through. These things have been needed since day one, and we've struggled to have them since then. So if we are to deliver at the scale required by Sudan, if we look over the coming two or three months, it's absolutely essential that we have these guarantees of security and safe movement of humanitarian staff and goods. <laughs>